gravity. What is that stuff anyway? Well, if you think it's a force, you'd be wrong according to this guy. It's actually the curvature of space-time caused by the uneven distribution of mass. Now, that's all great and fine, but for the sake of my game, we don't need to manipulate space-time to get gravity. All we need to do is add force to a rigid body once it's within our circle of gravitational influence. In this case, an overlap circle which returns all colliders in our radius. But we don't want to constantly be calling get component in our fixed update in order to affect its rigid body. We can use a hash set to store the colliders that enter our gravity. If the set doesn't contain that collider, we add it to the set and get the components only once. Then we can go ahead and apply our gravity to the object. Just be sure to clean up the set by removing objects that are no longer in gravity. And I just realized that this is being called in fixed update, so all that stuff I did still resulted in a looping git component. <laughs> Nice. I'll come back to that one. Um, so anyway, this newfound gravitational force allows us to do cool things like continuously missing the ground when we fall. Zero out that orbital velocity and boom, you found yourself on a completely new world with unique attributes. Soon enough, you'll be manipulating the atmosphere with your plants and machines. Walking on planets is simple enough, using some faux gravity to rotate around a target object as we walk. But what happens when we add another one of these? We no longer have just one target object. We can create an interface and implement some on-gravity enter and exit methods. Calling these from our planet's gravity script allows us to pass the planet's transform to our player via the gravity enter method, setting the active planet as the target. What's that? Need new materials? Take to the stars in search of asteroids and space stations. Just be aware of your surroundings. <laughs>